Hello and welcome to my easy to understand guide to ad busters and the magazine industry. This video is gonna be particularly relevant for you if you are studying Educast A-level media studies, as this is currently one of the optional set magazines for study on component two. Please be aware that this video does discuss some controversial content that appears both inside the Asbusters magazine and also on their website. Adbusters is written and published by Adbusters Media Foundation. It's an independent, small company. It's also not for profit, which means that there is zero paid for advertising in the magazine at all. This is very unusual. Most magazines rely heavily on advertising for revenue, whereas Adbusters does not offer any of this at all they actually get their funding from the cover price of the magazine. So when audiences pay for the magazine, they use that money and not to make profit, it's a not-for-profit company. So they just take that money and plow it straight back into the company to make the magazine. So a very highly unusual way of a company operating in the media industry today. Adbusters often struggles financially because of the fact that they do not charge for commercial advertising. So as well as making money from the cover price of the magazine, it's not actually enough to sustain them. Therefore, as well as them are offering merchandise, they're also offering audiences the chance to donate to them. And they even offer packages for audiences who are going to donate so that the audiences feel as though they're going to get something in return for their donations. The company was originally founded in 1989. There were two documentary filmmakers uh, who were called Callie Lassen and Bill Schmaltz. And they um, were very kind of environmentally friendly and what was happening at the time, there was lots of logging being done. So trees being cut down. Um, and there were pro-logging adverts being released by the logging companies on things like TV. And these two documentary filmmakers were really outraged that big companies with lots of money, capitalist companies, um, were able to produce advertising that made it seem as though destroying the environment was okay and a positive thing. Um, and what they wanted was they wanted to put a kind of alternative opposing advert on television, sort of kind of clarifying for the environment what the effects were going to be. And they were turned down, they didn't have enough money, it, they found it very difficult to get their adverts out there. And they felt this was hugely unfair that big companies with lots of money were able to promote capitalist ideologies and um, consumerism um, and the destruction of the environment. And it was really hard for people who were, um, you know, from lower incomes or people who had less money um, to be able to oppose these views. They worked really hard and they did eventually manage to get some coverage on TV. They also managed to get some coverage in newspapers as well. And they actually started quite a successful protest, which resulted in um, the logging companies actually having to kind of stop a lot of what they were doing. And so these two documentary filmmakers actually felt like they'd achieved something. So they started Adbusters Media Foundation as a company to get together with other people who were also kind of anti-capitalist, anti-consumerism, to start thinking about ways in which they could tackle capitalist consumerist culture. They describe themselves as an activist hub, people who are there, um, you know, who, who are very interested in social change, you know, those reformers from the kind of audience psychographics. Um, and they all kind of come together with their own skills and, and techniques uh, and interests to create various events and products. But it's definitely still very small company in comparison to a lot of other media organisations. They only have 12 members of staff that are actually full time working there. Um, and they have a range of freelance staff who they kind of hire in depending on what they need done. So um, it's a very small company in comparison to lots of other magazine publishers. They also ask their audiences to do things like send in photos, art, writing and poetry. So even though this magazine has, you know, kind of professional editors and journalists, they also encourage audiences to actually contribute themselves as well. So audiences actually stepping up and almost becoming producers too. They do have subscribers to the magazine in over 60 countries. So the magazine does reach a reasonable audience considering how small and how niche it actually is. 
There is, of course, a print version of the magazine that people can subscribe to uh, or they can pay uh, each month if they can find it in a shop. Um, there is also a digital version of the magazine as well. And that reflects, obviously, the changing face of the magazine industri industry. The fact that so many people now are um, not buying print copies of magazines and newspapers now and circulation is declining. So offering a digital version is perhaps there to target those audiences who are now spending more and more time on converting technologies such as phones and tablets. On their website they also have a shop which sells ad busters, um, merchandise and other products that they feel um, promote their own ideologies and events. So that's things like posters, clothing and you can buy back issues of the magazine too. It's a high price as well. It's £10.99 a copy, um, which is a very high cover price for a magazine. Um, so perhaps if this was, um, you know, all about spreading the word and, and anti-capitalism and anti-consumerism, maybe the price would be a lot lower. Um, but the fact that they charge such a high cover price suggests that they still need a certain amount of profit to operate. Adbusters Media Foundation also run a series of other events as well. So things like flash mobs, uh, Google bombing. Google bombing is where you encourage a lot of people to create fictionalised websites in order to manipulate Google search results. What you end up with is things ending up in search results that perhaps weren't there before. So, for example, um, you know, if somebody Googles the word idiot, then a picture of Donald Trump comes up. Um, so Google bombing is quite a good way of undermining what is supposed to be the search results when somebody is looking for something to create alternative messages. They also have like billboards where um, they have modified billboards to kind of um, create um, create messages about capitalism and consumerism and politics. But none of these activities are there really to promote the magazine. It's more about destroying the messages that were on Google or the billboards, um, uh, you know, creating particular messages rather than promoting the magazine. And that again, that's quite unusual to not have a huge amount of content that's designed to promote your own product is, is very strange. And it ties in with their kind of not for profit status. Although they're very aware that a lot of their audience does use new technology like phones and tablets, they did actually have a digital detox week um, and which they promoted as well. So all about letting go and stepping away of the technology and getting back into real life. Um, so even though that potentially might harm their audience figures, um, they're still happy to promote that because it ties in with part of their message. They do still encourage quite a lot of interactivity with their audiences. So, for example, the use of hashtags on their social media and on their website as well to try and encourage audiences to um, contribute towards viral trends. They also um, describe the fact that they take part in grassroots anarchy, where they encourage their audiences to take part as well. In fact, Adbusters is responsible for one of the biggest protests organised online in the history of protests. Occupy Wall Street was actually organised by adbusters as a way of protesting capitalist culture, uh, politicians, US government, um, and uh, hundreds of thousands of people turned out for the Occupy Wall Street protest. So adbusters really have um, proven themselves to be a company and a media text which is capable of affecting real change in society. The company has um, encountered some controversy before. So, for example, they were once accused of anti-Semitism um, and that obviously caused a lot of bad publicity for them. Which they do do things sometimes that are a little bit strange, a little bit controversial. So, for example, at one point they bought 30 seconds of just dead air on CNN. So they bought time on a kind of TV channel and then just didn't air anything on it. So it was just black space, basically. And again, this was a kind of silent protest against all the kind of consumerist messages that are often on television. You could have a think about regulation in terms of this magazine as well. Um, being that it's a magazine available in global countries um, and online as well, sometimes quite hard to keep your regulations for each country because every country has their own different regulatory bodies and laws. So it might be tricky sometimes to try and um, ensure that everything on your content is suitable for audiences across the world. 
Sometimes it's ad busters that are censored by other people. So for example, at one point, ad busters tried to create the, the same anti adverts that are in their magazine. They tried to produce them and buy TV space for them. So they tried to purchase space on television channels in Canada to show some anti adverts, uh, basically adverts that said how bad advertising was. Um, and the TV channels actually banned them from showing these adverts. So it didn't matter how much money they paid, the TV channels said no. So clearly a form of ad busters themselves being censored. Um, and the TV channels said at the time it was because it went against everything that they stood for. They obviously make all their money from advertising. A lot of these TV channels rely on advertising and brands. And they felt that by putting out an anti-advert advert, that it would damage their own branding. Um, so um, Adbusters has actually been censored by other companies. More recently, Adbusters has actually been taken off the shelves in Canada after people complained about the graphic content that is inside the magazine and on its covers sometimes. And it's easy to see why in the set issue, there is some graphic content that people may take issue with. Adbusters are actually trying to campaign to get their magazine back on the shelves in Canada at the moment, encouraging their audiences to take up the fight against what they feel is censorship of their magazine. Obviously, Adbusters is often filled with extreme content. Part of what they're doing is trying to shock audiences. Um, and so because of the extreme content that you will find both on their website and in their magazine, it means that some of the ad busters issues and sometimes on their website could be considered quite extreme content. Obviously, with Canada now banning the sale of ad busters in one of their major shops, um, it means that the print edition of the magazine in effect has been censored. But the online version of the magazine and their social media posts aren't able to be censored in the same way. So um, it's it just highlights some of the problems with regulation in that print products themselves can be controlled by companies if they want to. They can restrict audiences' access to them. However, um, it, you know, people are really unable to control the internet. Uh, there's a, a huge lack of regulation on social media in particular. So adbusters are still able to distribute and share some of the extreme uh, content online. So obviously quite a quirky, independent, unique media company that does things a little bit differently than almost every other magazine in existence. So that was my easy to understand guide to ad busters and the magazine industry. Don't forget to check out my channel for other videos that might be relevant for you on the Educast A-Level exam board, including keywords, set texts and theories. And if there are any particular videos that you would like that I don't already have, please leave a little comment below and I'll see what I can do.